Guys, it is officially time to go get the M3. It isn't the news we wanted, uh, but it's news. Muffin, are you ready to get the M3 back? Are you ready, baby? Are you ready? Oh, buddy. Guys, right after the i3 build, we're definitely gonna have to pick up a trailer. I am tired of renting trailers. We are officially back home. We got the M3 in the garage. We got the full brake kit from FCP Euro. I decided to get the rotors, drill solder rotors, the brake fluids, the sensors, the pads. I even got this off of eBay because mine's ended up getting seized up. So we have a seized up rotor and that's why all of our brake fluids ended up draining out. And that's why we actually have no brakes on the car whatsoever. So yeah, I'm so happy all this finally came in because it's been super sketchy getting this from frame shop to frame shop and from body shop to body shop, literally driving it with no brakes. I had to use the e-brake and that was the sketchiest thing ever, especially with such an expensive expensive car you don't want this to accidentally roll back or roll forward and just literally hit another car that would suck but yeah that being said this is from fc piero lifetime warranty if these pads ever get bad i can get those replaced for free if these rotors get bad i can replace that for free and even if these fluids eventually go bad i can get those replaced for free fc piero's lifetime warranty on literally everything guys take advantage of it check out fc piero i think honestly their prices are even cheaper than the online web so not only are they cheaper but you do get that lifetime warranty i mean i honestly don't know why not everyone's shopping with FC Piero. I absolutely love them. These brake pads too also create very low brake dust, which I really like because the front always creates so much brake dust. So I got the pads that don't create as much brake dust because you want to get this thing cleaned up, polished up, looking mint. I don't want brake dust ruining all of that. We got the two front sensors. So yeah, we did get everything for this car. The car is officially back home. It is filthy, but unfortunately, um, we couldn't get the frame shop uh, to fix our frame. Now, for those of you guys who've been following up on this build, basically the subframe went back on the car. We took off the original subframe. It just tweaked and it was cracked in like seven different spots because of this um, honestly very minor accident. I feel like it was very minor. Literally the hood was not damaged. Uh, the headlight was not damaged. It really showed you guys that the impact was right here. The fender from here back was not damaged. It was literally right here was the impact but it caused so much damage um, that including the frame actually got pushed back from the center. Now if it was from the front that's you can easily pull it from the front but since it's in the middle we're gonna actually have to disassemble the whole front end take it to a real frame shop. Not a body shop like an actual frame shop um, body shops, they can only do so much because they have chains and stuff like that. Uh, like just chains, they don't actually have like a frame rack. You need a frame rack so you can mount the car, get it like firm on there, and then actually yank on it. And uh, we need to disassemble the whole front end so they can pull it from the front, heat it, pull it from the side, and make it perfect. We're trying to get this frame perfect. I don't want to cut it and replace it, uh, mainly because it's not that bad. And if you end up cutting it and replacing it, it does ruin the, the structural integrity of it. Um, now that is a good option if, you, if it's severely buckled, but since ours is not severely buckled, I do want to just get that repaired. So unfortunately, it's gonna take us three weeks, three weeks before our appointment is gonna be for that. So I decided to just take the car back for now, at least try to work on it as much as we can, get everything dialed in. We can still drive the car, the body shop, um, my frame guy, my friends, 
everyone's telling me it's safe to drive the car as long as you're kind of going like, if you're not like beating on it. If you have seven out of the eight subframe bolts, which is pretty good, obviously you should have every single one and that's what I'm trying to get done, fix the frame, put the last bolt in. But in the meantime, at least we could drive it around um, probably through the city, maybe even the highway, but just not ba you know bash on it. That being said, we can't drive it without actually getting the brakes on there, so let's go ahead and do that. But right before we do, just so I don't forget, I just wanna put it out there, the i3, I mean, you guys can see I'm booked out three weeks for the frame on this. This is a normal frame. This isn't no aluminum. This is just normal metal. Uh, the i3 has an aluminum frame and uh, the closest appointment I found is from three months from now. And that is just a little too far for me. You guys know I just can't wait three months before we can just pull a frame so we can continue the rest of the build and leave that car right there in the middle of our driveway. So I need to figure out another plan for that car. We have to figure out what we're gonna actually do. I know a lot of you guys are saying to get rid of it. I know a lot of you guys are saying to uh, pull through with it and figure it out. If we can figure it out, we will possibly keep it and continue the build. We're just gonna have to figure it out step by step. Shout out to VTune. I actually reached out to VTune to see if they can help me or give me any knowledge or anything like that or, or, or you know anything at all. And they actually got back to me, which really shows how humble they are and I truly appreciate them. They got back to me to give me a bunch of information on how to actually fix something like that. And they even told me that they will fly out here and help me, which is very kind because they don't even know me. So again, that's very humble and thoughtful of them. So if we end up needing them, uh, you guys will see a collaboration very soon. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and install the brakes because that has been long awaited. On the new rotor there is a broken lug on this i still actually have the original hub for my other wheel but my new torque gun that i ordered i don't know if you guys saw the last video was not strong whatsoever so i had to return it, it was like a defected milwaukee gun so i've never actually experienced that before i'm sending that back and as soon as the new one comes in we're going to go ahead and pop off the hub piece off the other one and put it back on this one so for now we are going to be only rocking four lug nuts but as soon as we get that new impact gun, uh, we'll go ahead and get off our original hub and put it right on here. So far, so good, guys. I've never actually replaced a caliper before. I've done rotors before, I've done brake pads, but a caliper I've never done before. So uh, let's go ahead and figure out that in a little bit. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too hard because, um, and I hope it's not gonna be too messy because it's the middle of the night. It's literally, I don't know if you guys can see the time right now, but it is 4.21 a.m. Come on, come on, 4.21, come on. It's saying it's my bedtime. It wants me to unlock it and stuff. 4.21 a.m., guys. So, should I be working right now? Probably not, but uh, I wanna get a video out for you guys. So, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That was actually really easy, guys. I actually thought there's some kind of special way to remove this, but just untighten that, it's an 11 millimeter, and this thing just comes right on out. So that was super easy. Um, we're just gonna disconnect that off the hub. Two seconds later, guys, we got the entire caliper, boys. That was actually very easy. I don't know if you guys can tell right here, but it basically blew out of the boot right here. Uh, oh dear heavens, hold on, I'm gonna get the hell of messy brake fluid is. So now that we got that one out, let's go ahead and get the other caliper, slap that back on. I hope it's gonna be quick and easy. And five minutes later, guys, we have the brand new caliper, somewhat you know new to me, but used eBay caliper over here. And uh, we have the brand new TRW uh, brake pads from FCP Euro. So again, these have no brake dust. I'm gonna be super hyped for these because I hate cleaning my wheels all the time. And then obviously, these are the drill slotted rotors, looking beautiful. I think 
like every M3 comes with Joe Slada rotors, but new ones always look a lot better. <laughs> so anyways, let's go ahead and install this first, and then we'll go ahead and connect the brake line. Guys, just to put it out there, um, this caliper that I tried installing, I think it was for the other side, uh, mainly because this was the bracket that was on the other one, and it was sitting really like far back. Like, literally the caliper, I mean the brake pads were sitting right here instead of right here. So uh, yeah, basically all I did is replace this inner bracket. Um, literally just remove the two brake pads and then this thing just pulls out this way and comes right on up So if you actually get the wrong caliper and you have your original caliper just reuse that side I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but this is flat over here And this actually has like these indentations and stuff So this is the passenger side this style is the driver's side So now I actually know the difference you see you live and you learn you learn something new every day And just like that, guys, you have the new brake sensor, new brake pads, new uh, rotor, new caliper, um, connected the brake line. Um, everything should be good on this side. Now we just have to put, obviously, the little bracket piece, this little thing back on there. And once we do that, we can start bleeding the system. So the front is officially finished, guys. So now we need to bleed the whole system. Um, the way I like to do it, I've actually never showed you guys how to bleed a system on camera. So uh, this actually works for pretty much any BMW and any car in general. Blake taught me this, so shout out to Blake. But anyway, let me go ahead and just take out all the trash real quick, and I'll show you guys what you need to do. What I like to do is actually jack it up from all four corners, get all four wheels off, and do this all at once instead of jacking up each individual side. You guys can do it any way you want. You can literally jack up each individual side, but I like to get it all up, all the wheels off, so it's quick and easy. Guys, so we finally got all four wheels off of the car. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, fill up the tank, and then start bleeding again. I'll show you guys how you guys do it, just in case you guys have never done it before. And honestly, I might need to reference a video myself, because it's been a minute. <laughs> This is the pump. It actually comes with two bottles, the kit I got. This is the brand right here. Um, just a pretty much standard pump. But what I like about this pump, as you guys can see by the little cap right, oh dear heavens, hold up, hold up. This cap should be the same size as that. Should be mess free, but uh, man, I'm gonna have to clean my whole floor. I messed everything up. Guys, look how good that seals up. Now there's some other ones that you literally have to like put some kind of fasteners. BMWs typically are all the exact same size. So this one is literally meant for BMWs and honestly most cars. So again, if you guys want to cop this check it out on amazon or whatever this isn't a sponsored video i just really like this product because it makes life a whole lot easier let's just go ahead and fill up this bottle Right, guys now that we actually have some pressure in there you're supposed to actually get the pressure up to 10 to 15 um and it's actually going down pretty quickly i don't know why could be because we don't actually have much fluids but the best way to do it is to bleed this side first the furthest one away don't ask me why i don't know all the logistics all i know is that you want to go for the furthest one away over here and then after this one you do that side over there and then after that side you do this side and after this side then you do that side you basically want to start from the furthest one away this is the second furthest the third furthest and then obviously this is right next to the driver's I'm gonna do that in the end. So let's go ahead, pop off that cap that's like right back here. This should be like a nipple or something over here. Right there. Guys, this is the caliper that seized up last time, so we should be able to see a bunch of bubbles coming out of this one. Hopefully we can get all the bubbles out. This is the biggest concern right now. I don't know if you guys can see all those bubbles, but oh my God. Look at all those bubbles, guys. And a couple hours later guys we finally have the car on the ground and uh, the good news is the brakes have pressure so now we're gravy in the Navy um this the only other light pretty much is the seat buckle I'm still waiting on the seat buckle I actually ordered a seat buckle off of eBay and they sent me a blown one I don't know what's going on with eBay recently I've been buying so many parts off of eBay and they've been sending me the wrong parts for example that caliper was a passenger caliper that I bought and they sent me a driver's caliper thankfully I figured out a way to basically make it a passenger caliper from the old caliper but it, it, I just don't get what's been going on 
going on on eBay. People have been selling so much things they don't even know what it is. And people are even selling broken buckles nowadays on eBay. Like, why would you need a broken buckle? That's the reason I'm buying a buckle. So, because mine's is broken. Any of the car did get super filthy at the body shop. You know, that's the usual. We're gonna have to do an interior detail pretty soon. Some of you guys even said you guys want to see me do my own kind of like detail to the interior. So I'm gonna be doing a video on that hopefully pretty soon. But in the meantime, the car is absolutely filthy from the outside. Let's go ahead and back this baby up and get it a proper wash. <laughs> Guys, I read the comments. I went ahead and picked up my own car wash, like power wash thing for the house. This thing pretty much has everything on it. 2100 PSI, I think that's pretty good. Again, I paid $150 for this at uh, Costco, so I think this is a pretty good one. Comes with a turbo nozzle, which I like, and it also comes with the onboard foam cannon, so that's gonna be super nice, and a rim brush, which is gonna be super nice as well. I don't actually have any soap for today, but at least we gotta do a power wash. We'll do probably a soap and a wash when we actually do the interior detail, but for now, guys, the car is so filthy, and it just needs some water. <laughs> She's looking too good. And just like that, guys, the car is officially clean. So actually, there's a lot of things on the paint. Let me know what this is exactly. I don't know what this is. I don't really want to scratch it off or anything like that, but I'm hoping um, that can get like clay barred or polished out. I know this right here is an actual clear coat issue. This car has clearly been repainted in the front end before, but it has a bunch of these like little things on that's like really hard um, and that's extruding from the paint. There's like another one right there. I don't know if it's just like leftover residue or something or you know, another one right there. There's like so many throughout the entire car. Another one right there. The hood's gonna get repainted. The bumper is gonna get painted, uh, which we have sitting over there. And then the fender is gonna get painted. So hopefully we're gonna have everything painted. And then after that, we're actually gonna get the whole car polished because I want all this to be perfect paint. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm actually taking this to SSR Performance to get that premium paint job. And when I perform it's SSR Auto Body to get that premium paint job on this car. Still don't know if I'm gonna be driving this thing down to LA or if I'm gonna be towing it down to LA because Technically, we can drive it. I still need to drive in the city to actually see if it's drivable. But at the same time, that, that missing bolt is just really chipping me out. I don't know if I can do it or not. We'll see, we'll see. We might just end up towing this thing down there, getting the rod bearings done, uh, getting a full paint job on this thing. I'll keep you guys posted what ends up happening. It really honestly depends on uh, if we end up getting the framework done before or after the trip, I guess. Uh, so I'm really hoping, they said three weeks, I'm, we're heading off to LA in two weeks. So if we can get this thing sorted, hopefully in a week and a half, that would be ideal. And that is a possibility. So I'll keep you guys posted once I know. But yeah, that's gonna have to conclude the video, guys. Let me know down below, guys, if you guys will still pick up an E92 M3 at the current economy. This car is getting very, very, very expensive. Would you guys actually get an E92 M3 or would you guys rather have an F80? Because honestly, they're pretty much the same prices. A 40,000 mile clean title E92 M3 goes for around 30, 35 to 45 depending on the option and the F80s go from 40 to 50 so literally in the same ballpark almost so let me know down below would you guys rather have an E92 M3 or an F80 M3 they both have their own issues like crank hub and rod bearings but at the end of the day they're both amazing cars hopefully in the next video we can get some more things dialed in with the i3 I have a bunch of new parts over here as you guys can see and I really want this thing to hopefully come together and the main goal is to try to get that thing started but anyway anyway without further ado guys I love y'all so much remember to stay humble, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.